What's up, Life Church photographers? We are so thankful that you were willing to use your gifts and talents to help capture what's going on on our local campuses. My name is Robbie Dolan. I'm the staff photographer here at Life Church, and I'm going to show you a little bit about how we photograph baptisms. One of my favorite weekends here at Life Church is Baptism Weekend. I love getting to capture people proclaiming their love for Christ through baptism. And then we get to give them a personalized invitation card through the image that we capture that they're gonna be able to share with friends and family that weren't able to make it here as well as on social media. So let's dive in and figure out how to do this thing. So depending on your campus, you might have the pool on the side or in the middle. And if you have it in the middle, usually lighting is a lot easier because you'll have all the stage lighting available to you and camera placement is just straight in the middle. So it's quite simple. But we're gonna show you, if you do have your pool on the side, how to go about lighting it and putting your camera there. So we'll start with the camera placement, which is right here. Um, I believe everybody has this camera now. And so we are pointing it over to where you can see the stage as well as the people getting baptized. It's only about uh, two feet away from the edge of the pool here. Um, then when it comes to lighting, we'll actually put it right next to the camera. Um, it has a, a dimmer on here on the back, and we don't wanna have that full blast. I'll turn it up all the way so you can see. But when you have it full blast like that, it's going to turn all your subjects extremely white uh, and it, it won't look appealing at all. So we're gonna turn this all the way to about halfway here, and it'll depend and vary on your campus. So you wanna be sure to pay attention to that. Um, then we do, I do wanna address that we have a light up here. This one's actually just for me, so that you can see me while we're doing the training video. Uh, another lighting uh, thing that you're gonna wanna do for the pool is actually to have the lights at least one, if not two, of the main lights up here, you'll point them towards the pool. And that'll be a light that'll be more of a, a backlight that'll break your subject apart from your background. So we're gonna start talking about settings on your camera. Uh, depending on your camera body, it can vary a little bit, but it shouldn't vary all that much. Um, we're gonna start with the Canon 1DX and I'll show you the back of the camera here so you can get an idea of the settings. Uh, if you can keep your shutter above 200, uh, you're gonna avoid a lot of the motion blur that most people will get within their baptism shots. Uh, 250 is actually uh, preferable though. So with your aperture, I have it at 2.8. Uh, if you can have it at 2.8 or lower, have a lens that allow you to, to go lower, that's gonna allow a lot more light in and you'll get a much better shot and be able to keep that shutter higher without having to turn your ISO up. So now we'll talk about the ISO. Um, I'll have it at 1600 and I'll let you know if I change that. If you get it up over 2500, you're gonna have so much grain, it's gonna be hard to actually use. So you wanna try to keep that lower. Then with uh, white balance, we'll just uh, keep that on auto and everything else should be set and ready to go. So now what we're gonna do is get a shot of them in all three different stages. Uh, the first stage is when both of them are talking. You guys mind actually pretending, there we go, perfect. And so the pastor's gonna be talking to the, to the person getting baptized and you wanna get a shot of that moment. Um, then we're gonna get a shot of them uh, right before they go underwater and then right when they come out of water, we're obviously gonna get lots of shots of the celebration after that. So I'm actually gonna take a shot of this. <laughs> As you can see, I'm really close to the pool, had my arm over it, and got a shot that looks somewhat like that. So then the next thing we're gonna do is the when they're placing, about to get baptized. So if you guys can go ahead and get in position. Right. Perfect. And so here I am framing up and my focus is on Adam, who is getting baptized in a blue shirt. <laughs> And so now I'll take a shot of that. And then you can see that you can see Chris really well, Adam, Adam is lit really well. And then in the background, you see the screens, but they're blurry. And then you also see some of the lighting and the haze that's in the room. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and have them in the hold position and we'll get a shot of them uh, doing the baptism. Here we go. And... Yes. Woo! <laughs> Perfect. So with that one, you can see pretty well that we got uh, no motion blur even when he's raising his arms and uh, we have a little bit of water fall off uh, and several different images from that. So what I'm gonna do now is actually switch my settings. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna take my aperture down to uh, 1.8 and then I'm gonna take my ISO down to, let's go to 800 uh, and show you what that looks like. Here we go. Yeah, Woo. perfect. So now we have the uh, same type of shot, but just a different look, uh, a little bit shallower depth of field. Uh, we let a little bit more light in with the aperture, and then we were able to lower the ISO to get a bit of a cleaner shot. So now we're gonna switch over to the Canon Rebel T5. Uh, it's got the 50 millimeter 1.4 lens on there, but we're actually gonna do the exact same settings we were using on the previous, the 1DX camera, that's a full frame camera. And this one is a crop sensor. So we're gonna see that there is a bit of image quality uh, that we lose from using this camera, but you're still gonna be able to get a great shot. All right, so since this is a 50 millimeter and the last camera I was using a 35, I am gonna to have to back up. So now you can see in the image right here that uh, we still have really good lighting. The, the quality, we didn't really lose all that much. And there's just a slight bit of motion blur, but overall, once we post this on social media, it's gonna play really well. So now we're gonna dive into when you happen to have multiple photographers. Now, uh, the best way to utilize them to their fullest would be to put them on different lenses. So I'm gonna be using a 35, which is a wider lens. And then we're gonna have another photographer and she's gonna be on a 50 millimeter. So it'll be a bit of a tighter shot. We're also gonna position her in a different area from myself so that we're getting the same moment, but from different angles and with different looks. So this is Maylee and we're gonna go see what she's up to. All right, so let's take a look at the shot that Maylee got. And you can see from this photo that she got an awesome shot, but with her different angle and her different lighting, but just by being in a different location around the pool, she captured that same moment we've been capturing in a totally different way. So if you have multiple photographers, don't keep them all lined up in the same spot. Uh, move some of them around. You can maybe even have two as a safety for the, the shot with the people facing you. But uh, we definitely wanna explore other areas and get artistic with our shots. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at the editing side of these photos. All right, so now we're going to start the editing process using a program called Lightroom. We're barely gonna scratch the surface when it comes to editing, but um, I still wanted to show you just a little basics of what I do. Um, when we look at this image here that we've picked out, it's uh, Adam and Chris. Uh, I noticed I don't like to cut off his hand, but it's a good moment, so I'm still gonna use the image. Uh, I also don't like how dark the water is down here lower, and I wish his shirt was a bit brighter and more true to form with um, the color. Uh, the highlights look good on his arms, and you can see his face and there's still water pouring off of him, and there's a little bit of splatter up here, which is really fun. He's also broken apart from the background, which I really like with the lighting and the projection in the background. And then even with Chris, because we have the overhead lights from the auditorium, he's still broken apart from the blacks. So what we're gonna do is something real simple is actually just hit the auto button. And then I will bring back that exposure. And now you can already see the difference here uh, where the water's a little bit brighter, the shirt's a bit brighter, you can see a bit more of the blueness of it. And yet our highlights and his arms are still uh, just like they were in our original image. So let me bring that back down. 
Uh, another thing I'd like to do is I just want a bit richer of colors. And so I'm gonna bring up the vibrance and then barely bring up saturation. And then another favorite thing I like to do is bring up some of the blues just to really accentuate that water and then the shirt. So, um, actually last, one more thing. If we bring up the luminance, so I did saturation, now I'm doing luminance. And I'm gonna make the blues a bit brighter. And you can see how the, sheer, the shirt's really popping, which is looking great there. So now if we go back so you can see both of them, there's our original image, a little bit dark. And here's the image that we'll be able to post on social media. So hopefully that'll give you a few tips and tricks to quickly edit your images, really bring out the life that's already there and export them for use. So I hope this is giving you some great pointers as to how to capture baptism at your campus or at least a great starting point. And I just wanted to take the time to thank you again for using your gifts and talents within the local church. And remember, we're not taking pictures, we're capturing moments of life change as they happen.